TV stations, PBS stations, and on Free Speech TV, channel 9415 of DISH Network. Just eight miles south of here lies the former plutonium processing Rocky Flats nuclear weapons plant. Fourteen miles south lies the Rocky Mountain Arsenal, a former chemical weapons plant where deadly sarin, mustard gas, and napalm were manufactured. Not far from there lies a sprawling 480-acre toxic waste site known as the Lowry Landfill. Over the last half century, Colorado has been the center of the U.S. nuclear weapons programs. Within the state alone, there are 49 active underground missile silos each. Today, we will look at the history of this area in relation to the military-industrial complex and its impact on the future. Rocky Flats was built in the early 1950s to produce plutonium warhead triggers for nuclear weapons. It closed 37 years later when the FBI raided the plant in 1989 to investigate allegations of environmental crimes. But Rocky Flats re-entered the news recently with the publication of a new book called The Ambushed Grand Jury. This was no ordinary account. It was an inside look by a Colorado rancher named Wes McKinley, who spent a dozen years serving on a grand jury investigation of a nuclear cover-up at the site that involved the Justice Department. Meanwhile, there's growing concern over plans to reuse sites like Rocky Flats and to recycle the water and sludge from a landfill that some say is contaminated with radioactivity. Today, though, we're going to start with the history. We're going to talk to Len Ackland, professor of journalism at University of Colorado Boulder and author of the book, Making a Real Killing, Rocky Flats and the Nuclear West. Welcome to Democracy Now! Thank you. It's great to have you and it's great to be here in Boulder. Um, talk about, for people not familiar with Rocky Flats, put it in context, just how big is it, how significant is it in U.S. history? Rocky Flats was established in 1951 when the United States you know, made a decision um, to build up its nuclear weapons arsenals and needed a, a factory that would mass produce uh, plutonium bombs and um, those plutonium bombs became detonators for thermonuclear bombs. The plutonium bomb that we're talking about is equivalent to the, the bomb that destroyed Nagasaki. So, you know, in terms of thermonuclear weapons, which are about a thousand times more explosive than the bomb that destroyed Nagasaki, you know, the plutonium bombs are, quote, relatively small, but they're, and they're used to trigger these bombs. So Rocky Flats came into being. Um, the uh, headline on the Denver Post the morning after the, or the afternoon after the press conference was held, read, there's good news today. Uh, U.S. to build $40 million A-bomb plant. So this was regarded as, you know, a jobs creator for the Denver area. And indeed, over, you know, the next four decades, you know, billions of dollars went into the Denver economy. Um, the problem was that uh, for much of that period, you know, especially the first part of the period, Keep talking, keep talking, keep the, talking. Um, the uh, people didn't realize that uh, there were releases from Rocky Flats. There were uh, fires that had, uh, had taken place, uh, plutonium fires. In 1969, uh, on Mother's Day in, uh, in May, so uh, I'll figure out 35 years ago, <laughs> um, the, um, uh, a plutonium building containing 7,000, more than 7,000 pounds of plutonium uh, caught fire. Uh, plutonium, one of its other delightful uh, aspects is that it um, uh, combusts spontaneously in air. So the plutonium fire burned, the, the building nearly collapsed, the roof nearly uh, went off, and uh, even a government official a year later said, you know, we came close to losing that building, and if that had happened, hundreds of square miles would have been contaminated. So you had very high risk at Rocky Flats. You had regular releases of plutonium that were, were monitored. You had um, waste that was stored outside in barrels, um, something called the 903 pad. Um, the winds, you know, dis 
distributed that uh, plutonium um, off-site at Rocky Flats. So, you know, you basically had a situation where um, you had both a, a local hazard and a global threat. So let's talk about what's happened. Um, secret midnight burning of radioactive waste, an FBI spy flight with infrared cameras. I wanted to bring uh, Wes McKinley into this conversation, a Colorado rancher and the foreman of a grand jury.